We've been learning so much from our Where's Marty segment this morning. He is live at Baltimore's beautiful Peabody Library. He's been giving us a unique look inside. We learned that Edgar Allan Poe wrote music. Who knew, Marty? He copied music. He took his favorite song and copied it as a present to his wife. And this is Paul Espinosa. Okay, let me just say this. We have left the gallery where last half hour we were looking at the Edgar Allan Poe uh, handwritten sheet music. And we've come into the actual library. Paul is a curator of this library. We are surrounded by six stories of solid cast iron built in the 1850s. How many books are surrounding us right now? Uh, there's a little over 300,000 volumes in the collection. Uh, most date from the late 1800s, but we have books that go back to the Renaissance and every century thereafter. This was part of George Peabody's vision. That's right. Uh, George Peabody gave the money for the Institute in 1857. Um, he specified he wanted four parts, an art gallery, a public lecture series, a music conservatory, and a library. And that music conservatory, by the way, is world-renowned. Um, I had the honor of introducing Liberace at Pier 6 for one of the concerts when we used to sponsor the Pier 6 concert series and had a great conversation with Liberace about the Peabody Music Conservatory. He said it made his career, it made him who he became. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it is world famous. It's one of the oldest conservatories in the country and uh, many talented students here. I'm going to tell you something, folks. The grandeur of this is impossible to capture with just one camera. It'll take a Hollywood film crew. And what I'm going to suggest to you is go to Google Images and what do you think? Type in George Peabody Library? Yep, George Peabody Library, Baltimore, and you'll, you'll see lots of beautiful uh, images of the library. Would you say this is one of the in, in the world of architecture, one of the most talked about, discussed historical buildings in, in America? Sure, yeah. We often make these lists of 25 most beautiful libraries in the world, um, and that's quite a compliment if you think about it, right? Because they're putting us next to royal libraries built in the 1700s or 1600s. Uh, this, built in 1878, part of the Sheridan Libraries of Johns Hopkins University, uh, holds its own with many of those buildings. I mean, this, everything you're looking at, folks, is cast iron. What look to be plaster columns are cast iron painted to look that way, and it's all about fire prevention. Right, everything's cast iron. The floors, the stairwells, even the bookcases up above, and they were worried really about fire safety because everything that's an electric lamp now used to be gas lamp early on, if you can oh imagine. My God. Think about that. Every lamp you're looking at, think about that, surrounded by 300,000 books, would have been an open flame. Well, yeah. yikes. They were careful. <laughs> now, think about this also. We're, uh, we're in Mount Vernon. The, the Washington Monument is within sight of us. This is built on the side of a hill. Now, add that to the complication. Right. Uh, the architect Edmund Lind uh, knew what he was doing, um, and they did a, a wonderful job. It was built to last, uh, and uh, knock on wood, we've never had any major There's issues. There's enough wood to knock on here, all, all these study desks and whatnot. Yeah. All I, the furniture is original. I wish I could take each and every one of you in here. When you walk in, does it still take your breath away daily? It does. Uh, when I walk in in the morning uh, and, and take a gander up, uh, I'm, always, I'm always impressed and, and happy to be here. And the olfactory sensation here is unbelievable. When you, when, you take, when you inhale, you smell library, you smell real books, and that is a scent that is disappearing from the world due to online. Well, sure. Uh, you, you smell a nook. It smells like whatever was on your hand before you picked up the nook. Wow, <laughs> well, you didn't wash your hands, did you? Okay, fine. Well, go ahead. But, yeah, that's, that's what's uh, so great about a, a space like this is people can come in uh, and uh, really sit with their thoughts and sit with the books um, and, and enjoy learning. Google image George Peabody Library. You won't believe what you... You know, in the promos, you always hear me say, come on, you got to check this out. <laughs> This is top of the list of, come on, you got to check this out. Well, Marty, so beautiful. How, Marty, how can people get access if somebody is out there and says, boy, I've lived here all my life and never been in there? Good. In, in a post-COVID era, when you guys open back up, w can people go online to find out about tours? And he was asking. Uh, yes, uh, you can go on to the Johns Hopkins Library website. Uh, and you can find my contact information on there, uh, and you can contact me by email. It's the best way to get a hold of me. Paul Espinosa, if every one of you could see this in person, it, it would be life-changing. Let me right. pull it back to you. Thank you, Marty. We'll be right back.